All right, everyone, it is finally here, the first NFL game of the season, and I have you guys covered with the top prop bets in Thursday Night Football. Let's go ahead and get into it. So first, I like to start out with the slate preview, which is just breaking down the expectations for that game. And so first things first, just looking at who's expected to win, it's going to be the Kansas City Chiefs. And we can see basically across the board here, doesn't really matter what sports book, it's going to be about four and a half, okay? Average odds there are going to be four and a half. Now, I think that number will change depending on if Travis Kelsey is going to be active, but we will see that the over and under is set at 52 and a half. This is expected to be a higher scoring game. This is expected to be a game in which there's a lot of offensive production. We will see though that we are getting kind of smaller lines for a lot of players because we don't exactly know what to expect from these teams. Now we're going to make our best educated decisions to make some of the best bets we can possible, but these two teams do have a lot that we're trying to figure out still, especially if Travis Kelsey sits. So we'll go ahead and take a peek at the injuries here and nothing too crazy here for the Lions. Okay. The base injury news, I guess, or whatever suspension news would be Jamison Williams, but we, we already knew that, right? Then on the flip side of it, the Kansas City Chiefs, the biggest takeaway that I have is that Travis Kelsey currently questionable. If he sits, someone like Noah Gray might be someone that we're looking at. What's another big takeaway from this injury report right here? Kadarius Tony is not on there. He was a full participant in practice on Wednesday. That does change the slate as well. And so when we're looking at prize picks here, we are going to see that we are not getting a bunch of props for that game, especially for the Kansas City Chiefs pass catchers. Why? Because that would leave prize picks underdog a little bit too susceptible to people being able to bet both ways in a massive way. Uh, if Travis Kelsey sits or if he plays, that would adjust the lines for the other players significant now we will see that you know underdog is definitely giving us i feel like a lot more props as it sits right now uh but at least we are starting to get some other ones for the chiefs players okay sky Moore at 44 and a half receiving yards we're not getting Kadarius tony prop i find that very interesting so if travis kelsey does that everyone is saying that it's going to be noah gray taking over and i agree with that at the same time he's not travis kelsey i do expect the production to really just be spread out amongst the other pass catchers and so to me who all gets bumped then it would probably be Kadarius tony i would say him and sky Moore are going to be the two players that probably most likely get the biggest bump in production but also jarek mckinnon potentially i'll touch on that in a second here but looking at tony he is someone that we know probably one of the best offensive threats really in the NFL. If he stays healthy, he's that big of a playmaker. He just can never stay healthy. So he's a big question mark. And the biggest question mark that we have on it is how many snaps is he going to get? Is he going to play really over 50% of the snaps? That's my biggest question mark. And the fact that he was a full participant in practice on Wednesday, he might. Now I know he hasn't really practiced the whole camp, but at the same time, he didn't really practice that much when he was with the Chiefs last season, he had some very productive days. And so I know we're not getting any props for him just yet, but that would significantly change our outlook for Sky Moore. Maybe a little bit for MVS. I don't really think his role is going to change at all, guys. Okay. And then these other people like Richie Jane. Okay. So I did mention that I think maybe Jarek McKinnon is actually going to be the one that benefits the most. Now, my biggest worry with him is that they've had the same kind of plan with him the past like few seasons where he just hasn't involved in the offense at the start of the season. I think because he's a vet, honestly, but I think we could see a lot more production go his way if Travis Kelsey is out, especially in the passing game, because we know Pacheco is not going to get that involved in the passing game. Maybe CH is more involved than we all think, but I think McKinnon is the most logical play there. And so when we look at some of the lines for some of these guys, so I have MVS pulled up. Prize Picks has given us a line of 39.5 for his receiving yard. Vegas has it set about 40.83 on average, and the projection date has it set 37.44. The thing with MVS is we know he's going to get a few chances to get the over, and probably on like one play, the air yards will be there for him. It's just whether or not him and Patrick Mahomes can connect. Okay. And the thing that I do like about MVS is like, we know what his role is going to be. Sure. His snaps kind of fell off at the tail in the season last year. That could have been due to a few things. I kind of think a, a little bit of it is like the weather being colder, harder to hit on those longer plays. And honestly, MVS just isn't that good. So I think that's part of it as well, but he did look his best that he's ever looked in his career at the tail in the season last year. And I don't like him, but at the same time, it wouldn't be shocking to see him have a big game against uh, the Detroit Lions. You know, he's a big play receiver. Either he's going to crush the over or he's going to have like 27 receiving yards. From there, we look at someone like Sky Moore for his receiving yards. And so we can see the projection data doesn't like the over. The Vegas line doesn't like the over. And then also the prize picks line doesn't like the over. If Travis Kelsey plays, I would actually say 
the under would be the way to go. Now we can see that slightly favoring the over here. The odds are the Vegas odds are, but guys, this isn't one that we need to be attacking, right? This is one that once again, if Kelsey plays, I do like the under. Okay. That being said, I was really hoping that we would get some receptions props for him because I could see him getting like five receptions for 30 yards being a very short yards guy. Now, for what it's worth, the reports have been coming out that Sky Moore is going to be an every down player for whatever that's worth. I think we are going to see the snap share for these pass catchers be extremely spread out, especially if Travis Kelsey sit because you have Ross, you have Rice there who are not terrible players. You have Richie James, who a lot of people like as well. And then obviously you have Tony, who you're going to want to have some design plays go to. Sky Moore might be an every down player, but it might be like Elijah Moore last year where yeah he might be playing all the snaps but garrett wilson aka Kadarius tony is the one getting the most production that's kind of my worry there now whole different quarterback situation there let's make that very clear right like patrick mahomes compared to for that example elijah moore garrett wilson to zach wilson last year that's a big difference right but maybe just maybe we could be looking at someone like jarek mckinnon maybe for receiving yards we look at the underdog line we look at the Vegas line. We look at the price fix line. It is going to be the same across the board. Okay. We are not really getting a big edge here. Okay. I want to make that clear. And the projection data, guys, I'm pulling in this projection from like five different sources. Okay. Has the under there as well. So I don't love that, but I personally think he'd be someone that is going to be more involved if Travis Kelsey sits. That's the issue that we have. Okay. I feel like I've hammered that home a bunch. Let's go ahead and switch up and get into Detroit. Now, guys, we will see that in this game, the only two really good props that we are getting for this game right now, as it sits, are going to be Gibbs for over receptions, 3.5. This number has since went down. Okay, this was about 54% chance for the over to hit. And it was about minus 140 earlier today. That number has since come down, okay? But at the same time, Gibbs to get over 3.5 receptions is a good one because not only is he projected to get higher at 4.3, Vegas has the Lions at 3.5, but they also are fair in the over. We know they have made it very clear, the Detroit Lions have, that he is going to be kind of Elvin Kamara. That's who they want him to be. Elvin Kamara is rookie year. David Montgomery is going to hold the role as the running back, and they're going to try to get Gibbs involved somehow. They might both be on the field a bunch and they're going to need him to. I know the Detroit Lions have been getting a lot of hype and a lot of people are betting them to win the conference. I personally don't see it. Now, that being said, I know my Green Bay Packers, Christian Watson has a hamstring injury right now. The Vikings defense is terrible. So I kind of get it. But when we look at this, like if the Lions are going to be good, it's going to be because Gibbs and Montgomery are playing to really above expectation. Because we look at this receiver depth, they're all okay. Like Marvin Jones Jr. I do think is going to have a good season, at least at the start kind of like he did last year for the Jaguars. Then you have Josh Reynolds, who honestly was very solid last season when he was needed in that role. And then he kind of got banged up and really lost that kind of receiver number two role when he was in that role, was very efficient. Then you also have Raymond, who at the tail in the season had a good season as well. But these names, we can all admit, are very ugly, right? It's ASB and whoever else. And for what it's worth, Sam LaPorta, I don't want to trust a rookie tight end as well. We have seen that time and in time again be a source of frustration. So who I want to be on is going to be Gibbs. And so all the reports have been coming out saying that he's going to be someone that's going to be involved in the passing game. Let's go and roll with that. 53% chance of it. Not exactly that magic 54 number that we want, but that's going to be a good over bet. And the best part about it is that we are seeing that number on both prize picks and underdog. And for what it's worth in limited work in the preseason, and did have one reception for 18 yards. Now we are seeing this, guys. He may not see a full workload on Thursday. They want to be smart with him. Guys, this doesn't make any freaking sense. This is the most dumb report ever. This is like, why would they tell us this one? I guess the, the biggest reason why they would tell us this is maybe, maybe, just maybe, the Lions aren't, or sorry, maybe, just maybe, the Kansas City Chiefs will not game plan around him that much because he's not going to get a full workload that is just stupid guys okay david montgomery a very good three down back okay don't get me wrong very good three down back i've always thought he's very underrated but why would this report be coming out it's just weird like it doesn't make any sense no one expected gibbs to have a full workload like what is a full workload is that playing over 51 percent of the snaps like come on a full workload to me is really just getting 10 to 16 opportunities in today's nfl as a running back right will he get that i'm not really sure i do think the targets will be there and especially if it is going to be a game in which once again we see that kansas city is going to be favored to win which this number would probably go up if Travis Kelsey is active, personally, I don't think the Lions are as good as everyone thinks, then Gibbs getting over 3.5 receptions 
should be a good one. And now another one that is really kind of popping is going to be Jared Goff for over 1.5 passing touchdowns. Once again, we did see that this game is going to be a higher scoring game. That makes sense. Uh, about a 52.3% chance. That one has come down. Okay. That one continues to come down. He's projected to get 1.84 as well. Like that's not a big edge. So that's another one there with Jared Goff that we probably just shouldn't be going crazy with. But if this is going to be a higher scoring game, it does make sense. What I find interesting though about this prop is that none of his other pass catchers are really popping in terms of receiving TDs. Now we're not getting that for prize picks. Probably not going to get that for underdog as well. But like you could par like you could pair that with them. Like, I don't know, we could go fantasy score. Like ASB, right? You could go over there. Marvin Jones. I actually don't mind that. If <laughs> Jared Goff is going to throw 1.5 touchdowns, sure, could go to David Montgomery. Could go to ASB. Could go to Gibbs as well. Like that is certainly within the realm of possibilities. I would say if he is getting 1.5 touchdowns, Marvin Jones would be part of the reason as to why he is kind of that red zone threat. He's he's able to go out and make those acrobatic catches in the red zone. You can throw a deep fade or a fade to him in the end zone and he can come down. And then like another one here, this is interesting, like, right? So let's say Gibbs doesn't actually get a full workload. Once again, stupid thing that they're telling us. But then David Montgomery for over 12.5 for the rushing attempts would be a good one. We do see the consistency across the board. Vegas says 12.5. Prize Pick says 12.5. The projection data says 12.5. So about a 52% chance for the under or for the over to hit. Not a bad one. There is some sort of stackability there. And now I do want to call this out as well. I do have some fantasy score props in there right now. The only issue that I have is really up until the day of the Vegas line projections that I have in there are not going to be filled because we're not going to have all the props in there that we would like for a said player. Like Isaiah Pacheco's probably touchdown prop isn't being factored in here. And that's why that number is going to be lower. So that's my only worry there. So really for now and like underdog, we can't really use that for a comparison purpose because underdog does half uh, PPR. But once again, if we just 3.5 receptions, stay would get the over four minus two points there because of the half point basically the exact same line there okay projection data has that 3.24 like we're not seeing a big edge here these numbers seem to be right is my biggest takeaway the only one that maybe and we do have the full projections coming in here i checked before maybe it's actually asb for under fantasy score and what i find interesting is if we look at something like the odds jam optimizer here and just a reminder guys i am partnering with them if you guys want access to their kind of optimizer the sports book screen that i was showing you guys as well i'll link to that in the description below use promo code 925 the number is 95 to get 25 percent off also if you guys want access to my cheat sheet it is available link in the description below for ten dollars a month okay but looking at it the reason I partnered with them is so that we can always make the best decisions possible. We can make the best bets possible. One of the ones that's popping up there as well is actually going to be ASB for under his receptions of seven, heavily favored for the under. And so that's where it's like, all right, the fantasy score, obviously if he's getting under seven receptions, not as likely to hit. And that's where like Jared Goff throwing 1.5 touchdowns. It's, it's weird. Now this is calling for Josh Reynolds to get the over. Don't mind that for receiving yards, about 54% chance for that one to hit. Not terrible. But what I like here is that we are getting some that are going to be tackles props. So if you guys want to toss those out in there, maybe make your slip a little bit bigger, you can go ahead and do that there as well. So that's really where I like this. You know, field goals made. To me personally, with my cheat sheet here, I like to use this as prop, as sports that I know that we can just look at and see that's an edge that we have. That fantasy score is an edge that we have. That passing yards prop is the edge that we have. Obviously using the Vegas line, prize picks that data available whereas this is collectively telling us you know based off of this line or so the tackles and assist prop is going to be a good bet so if you guys want to roll with those toss those in there by all means go with it you know they're not terrible but we can see we are getting some slight edges here so if you guys want to roll with those by all means go for it. now with that being said let's go ahead and make some slips for thursday night football and just real quickly one other point here with david montgomery personally i think this line is low for him for 12.5 receiving yards once again if it gives is knocking a full workload and they're committing to David Montgomery. He's a good three down back. Like 12 and a half receiving yards would be an extremely low number for him. Like we can see last year, Swift as a starter, and you might not say, all right, Swift being the starter, like what does that matter? Like we, we know Gibbs is going to get a lot of work. They still had other running backs involved. We see Swift caught the over a bunch, right? Like basically every single game except for one and two at 12 and a half. So like in a weird way, both can be correct. It's, it's once again, we just don't have that uh, knowledge prior to the game. We just don't. It's not there. We're making educated guesses. So just looking at kind of a uh, Detroit Lions uh, slip that we could do, uh, 
Looking at Jared Goff, I do think there's going to be some correlation here. If he throws for two touchdowns, I do think Marvin Jones has a good chance to be a recipient of one of those touchdowns. That's one catch, six yards, and a touchdown, right? 7.6 points or so. I like that. And then Gibbs, just one of the best EV bets for this game. And that being said, we, we aren't getting that good of EV bets as it sits right now. And then uh, David Montgomery for over 12.5 receiving yards. That's a personal thing. Does seem weird to do that. Like these two do not correlate, right? Like they're, they shouldn't. At the same time, you got to get your best players involved. And I would say besides ASB, Gibbs and Montgomery are going to be those next two best options for them. So I do expect them to be involved in the past. And then you could just go ahead and pair that with whatever other EV bet is out there when you guys are making your slip. Once again, you can use the nine to five cheat sheet for that, or you guys can go ahead and use the odds jam one as well. And I do just want to call out something here as well. If you guys agree with that, I know this is very much trying to get lucky with a touchdown, but if you guys are going to bet Jared Goff for the overpassing touchdowns, once again, betting that he's going to get two, maybe Marvin Jones on underdog for his over fantasy score would be the better option. It really... You know, once we factor in the uh, you know full point reception versus the half point PPR, Marvin Jones should actually probably be at 5.5. But once again, I do think he has a decent chance to score a touchdown. And then just looking at the underdog set that we could run out there, I like Gibbs still for over 3.5 receptions. We could also run out ASB for under seven receptions if you guys want to do that. I still like Marvin Jones for over fantasy points. I uh, like the over passing TDs there for Jared Goff. And then we could potentially run out Jarek McKinnon for over 26.5 receiving yards there. Wish I could give you guys more for the camp. Kansas City Chiefs. Obviously, if there are props made available throughout the day tomorrow, we could be on those using uh, the cheat sheet or the optimizer. But that's going to be all for today's video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the coverage. If you did, make sure to give a like and subscribe. Let's have a good slate. And as always, let's keep cashing.